so recently the FDA put out a release saying that there was concern about CAR T's increasing the likelihood of T cell malignancies. Um, so what do we do with this data? Um, I think it's important that we start with the fact that a lot of these CAR T's got approved under what we call an accelerated approval single arm strategy. And I mentioned that because when you have a single arm strategy, particularly in an unmet need, because most of these CAR T's are starting in patients who have exhausted all therapies. So when you have that approach, um, these products are very efficacious, but if you have side effects, it's really hard to tell whether side effects are coming from patient factors, which means who are the patients getting them? Is it due to the disease, the, the nature of the disease itself, or is it actually due to the treatment, right? And so in single arm studies, you can't isolate the true causative factor. And to do that, you need randomized controlled studies. And those are ongoing. What I can say is in myeloma specifically, out of about 600 patients that were looked at by the FDA, and there's two approved products, one is Siltacel, one is Idacel, in that 600 patient data set, there was only one patient who had a T cell malignancy after CAR T. And that data is actually being presented at this year's ASH as a poster. That patient, it turns out, that T cell abnormality was actually detectable even before the CAR T. So remember that when we go through leukophoresis, we're collecting the patient's T cells. So here again, we don't need to raise alarms about a T cell malignancy that was actually likely already at a prodromal state in the patient before they got CAR T or fludarabine or cyclophosphamide. Um, but I do think we need to study this more. Um, but I think as the FDA also agreed, especially in myeloma, you know, probably Siltacel is the single best therapy we have in myeloma right now. The response rate was in the initial uh, CARTITUDE 1, 90, 98%. Progression-free survival was nearly three years. And we're also seeing in the randomized studies that uh, not only are these PFS benefits being shown, but we're not seeing yet a harm in overall survival, right? And that would be the real concern about new malignancies. If you see that a therapy is giving you a new s secondary cancer and it's compromising overall survival, that would really be scary. But that's far from this. This is, you know, one out of 600 patients who had a pre-existing clone. In myeloma, I'm not worried about this, but I do think that we'll need to inform patients that they're going to be followed for this. And, uh, and also emphasize that currently the FDA requires 15 years of follow-up, um, which in itself is kind of crazy. In relapsed refractory myeloma, following patients for 15 years, we didn't even think that was something that you'd have to do, but it's testament to how active these therapies are. So um, I think the FDA is just doing the better part of valor and dotting the I and cross the T to make everybody aware of this, but uh, it's likely not gonna change the risk-benefit profile of most of these approved products.